Welcome to Seriously Read a Book. My name is John, and today we have a visitor listening. Hi. This is Rose, my daughter, and today we are going to be reading Mrs. Lane is a Pain, part of the My Weirder School series. So for all of all those of you who've been saying do more Dan Gutman books, this is for you. Here we go. Chapter one: The coolest sport ever. My name is AJ, and I hate getting hit by water balloons. Do you and your friends ever have water balloon jousts? Water balloon jousting is the coolest sport ever, especially when you joust on bikes. One time, we were having a water balloon joust on the grassy field next to our school. My friend Alexi and I were the knights. We got on our bikes at opposite ends of the field. Our friends Ryan and Michael were the squires. Squires are people who help the knights. Neil, who we call the nude kid even though he wears clothes, was the judge. He put a line of orange cones on the grass so Alexia and I wouldn't crash into each other. I put on my bike helmet, Alexia put on her helmet. Hand me my water balloon, squire! I told Michael, yes, my liege. And then there's a little, there's a little asterisk here. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little asterisk right there. And basically what that means is that you're to go down to the bottom of the page um, where there's another asterisk, and that's called a footnote. Guess, Rose? It's a little star on the page. It's a little star, like yeah. Flower. Yeah, asterisks look like stars or flowers. There are three lines that go through, go through the same center point. All right, and then he, after the word liege, he says, I don't know what a liege is, but that's what squires are supposed to say whenever knights say anything to them. Okay, Michael handed me a big red water balloon. Ryan handed Alexia a blue water balloon at the other end of the field. Are the knights ready? shouted Neil. Ready! I shouted. Ready! Alexia shouted. On your mark! yelled Neil. Get set! Joust! Kids? Please don't try this at home. We are professionals. Alexi and I started pedaling toward each other. It's not easy to pedal a bike on the grass while you're holding a water balloon in one hand. We were getting close to each other. I held up my water balloon, ready to let it fly. Alexi and I were 20 feet away from each other. Nail him, Alexia, shouted Ryan. You can do it, AJ, shouted Michael. Alexi and I were 10 feet away from each other. It's really hard to hit somebody with a water balloon from a moving bike. You have to throw it at the exact perfect moment. Alexi and I were five feet away from each other. It was time. E yeah! I hollered. Just as I was about to let go of my water balloon, Alexia heaved her balloon. It exploded all over me. I was soaked. There's a picture of AJ being soaked by the water balloon. And his helmet is getting clean. Oh, his helmet's getting, yeah, it's getting clean for free. It's like leaving your car outside when it rains. My what? Not that you probably have a car, but maybe like leaving your bike outside? I don't know. He is riding a bike. Yes, he is riding a bike. Oh, so his bike got clean for free too. My water balloon sailed wide, missing Alexia entirely. Bam! Alexia hollered as she rode by. In your face, AJ! Alexia is the winner! shouted Neil. After that, we switched places so Michael and Ryan would be the knights and Alexia and I would be their squires. It was a blast. I got nailed three or four times, but I hit Alexia a few times too. Everybody was drenched and falling down laughing. We kept jousting until we ran out of water balloons. That's when the most amazing thing in the history of the world happened. I noticed that somebody was hiding behind the bushes nearby. Well, that's not the amazing part, because people hide behind bushes all the time. The amazing part was who was hiding behind the bushes? Dun, dun, dun. The musical accompaniment by Rose. I figured the person watching us was Andrea Young, this annoying girl in my class with curly brown hair. But it wasn't Andrea. You'll never believe in a million hundred years who was spying on us. It was Mr. Klutz, our school principal. He has no hair at all. I mean, none. He must save a lot of money on shampoo and combs. I wonder if he uses a hair dryer to dry his head. Uh-oh, I said, it's Mr. Klutz. Oh, and there's Mr. Klutz talking to the whole group. He looks like he's smiling, though. I don't think anybody's in trouble. Let's I bet see. I that was the weekend. You think, you think it was the weekend? Not like a school day? Hmm. 
We're in trouble now, said Ryan. Mr. Klutz came over to us. It was too late to run away. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I had to think fast. We're sorry, Mr. Klutz, I said. We won't do it again. Please don't tell our parents we were jousting with water balloons, begged Neil the nude kid. Don't be silly, said Mr. Klutz with a big smile on his face. I really enjoyed watching you. In fact, you kids have given me a great idea. We have? said Alexia. What's the great idea? asked Michael. I'm not going to tell you, said Mr. Klutz. Please, 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 we all begged. Usually if you say please over and over again, grown-ups will get sick of hearing it and give you what you want. That's the first rule of being a kid. Yeah, Rose, don't listen book. to any of this. He does say that in every book. Is, oh, it's the first rule of being a kid? He has lots of first rules of being a kid, doesn't he? Okay, okay, I'll tell you my great idea, said Mr. Klutz. So he was right, right? Yay! I'll tell you my great idea at the assembly tomorrow. Boom. Boo! Said everybody. All right. Chapter two, the secret grand prize. The next morning our class had to walk a million hundred miles to the all-purpose room for the assembly. Andrea was the line leader. Her crybaby friend Emily was the door holder. I don't know why they call it an assembly because we don't put anything together. If you ask me, they should make assemblies and toys the same way. No assembly required. Okay, this is a picture of Mr. Klutz standing up in front of the assembly. I sat next to Ryan and Michael. Everybody was gabbing like always, even the teachers. When Mr. Klutz climbed up on stage, he made a peace sign with his fingers, which means shut up. Good morning, Mr. Klutz said. I was watching some of our students playing on the field after school yesterday and it gave me a great idea. Maybe he's gonna give us an award or something, I whispered to Ryan. That would be cool, he replied. I realized how talented you students are here at elementary school, said Mr. Klutz, so I've decided that we're going to have a talent show. We're going to call it Elementary Schools Got Talent. What? Yay! said all the girls. Boo! said all the boys. Talent shows are for girls! That's I, true. I shouted. Yeah! agreed all the boys. I'm not going to be in some dumb talent show, said Ryan. Me neither, said Michael. Oh, I should mention one thing, said Mr. Klutz. The winner of the talent show will get a secret grand prize. So if none of the boys will be participating, I guess a girl will win the secret grand prize. Secret grand prize. I love secret grand prizes. Where do I sign up? You can sign up right here in the all-purpose room after school today, said Mr. Klutz. But right now, I want to introduce the woman who's going to be in charge of our talent show. She's a real professional talent coach, and her name is Mrs. Penny Lane. At that, thank yes, uh, applause. At that moment, the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. A lady came out on stage. Well, that's not the weird part. Because ladies come out on the stage all the time. The weird part was that she came out on the stage riding a unicycle. Not only was she riding a unicycle, but at the same time she was juggling three goldfish bowls with real live goldfish in them. And not only was she riding a unicycle and juggling three goldfish bowls, but she was also whistling, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Wow! Everybody said, which is mom, upside down. It was totally amazing. Mrs. Lane is really talented. And here is a picture of Mrs. Lane doing the really talented thing that she was doing. <whistles> Chapter 3, The Talented Mrs. Lane. Mr. Klutz told us to give Mrs. Lane a round of applause, so we clapped our hands in circles. Howdy, y'all! said Mrs. Lane as she took a deep bow. She must be from Texas. People in Texas say y'all all the time. Nobody knows why. In Arkansas. In Arkansas. <laughs> Rosen's people in Arkansas. Mrs. Lane is the perfect person to run our talent show, Mr. Klutz told us. As you can see, she's very talented herself. In fact, you may have seen her on TV. Everybody got all excited because anybody who's been on TV must be really famous. <laughs> Mr. Klutz asked Mrs. Lane to tell us some of the TV shows she'd been on. 
Well, she said, I was the contestant on America is Not Stupid, Are You Smarter Than a Turnip, America's Next Top Garbage Collector, Keeping Up with the Librarians Who Wants to Win a Million Pizzas, Pancake Wars, Wheel of Misfortune, and Undercover Mother. Wow! Everybody said again. Mrs. Lane's a real celebrity, said Andrea. She's famous! Mr. Klutz asked Mrs. Lane if she had any other talents. She got off the unicycle and did a handstand while singing, I've been working on the railroad. Wow! Everybody said again. We gave her another round of applause. Mrs. Lane was all out of breath. That was amazing, said Mr. Klutz. You are multi-talented, Mrs. Lane. Multi-talented means many talents. I know that because every morning my mother gives me a multivitamin. It has 10 different vitamins in it. How do they jam all those vitamins into one pill? Nobody knows. I'm so excited to be in charge of elementary school's got talent, said Mrs. Lane. This is gonna be so much fun. Your brothers and sisters will be there. Your parents will be there. You might even get in the newspaper. Does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Lane? Asked Mr. Klutz. Ryan raised his hand. Do armpit farts count as talent? He asked. What's an armpit fart? <laughs> asked Mrs. Lane. All the boys started making armpit farts. With hundreds of us doing it at the same time, it sounded like an orchestra, except with armpits instead of musical instruments. <laughs> Rose is trying to make an armpit fart behind the camera, but she's not succeeding. Um, Oh, then there's a footnote and it says that would be cool if there was an orchestra of armpit farters. <laughs> yes, I suppose that would qualify as a talent, said Mrs. Lane. How about regular farts? I asked. No, said Mr. Klutz firmly. Regular farts do not qualify as a talent. Because That's not knows. fair, somebody shouted. What'd you say, Rose? Because everyone can fart. Oh. It's huh. not really a talent. <laughs> if everyone can do it? Mm -hmm. hmm. Even animals can do it. That's true. And trees. Trees fart? No, said Mr. Klutz firmly. Regular farts do not qualify as a talent. That's not fair, somebody shouted. Yeah, if armpit farts are a talent, then real farts should be a talent too, said Neil the Nude Kid. That's discrimination against certain kinds of farts said Alexia, and we're taught that discrimination is wrong. Yeah! Everybody started talking about farting and discrimination until Mr. Klutz made the shut up peace sign again. Are there any questions that don't concern farting? He asked. Emily raised her hand. What if somebody doesn't have a talent? She asked. Does that mean they can't be in the talent show? Mrs. Lane came down off the stage and went over to Emily. Everybody has a talent, sweetie. She said, I'm sure y'all can do something that most other people can't do. For instance, maybe y'all can play the spoons. Mrs. Lane pulled two spoons out of her pocket and started hitting them against her legs in rhythm. It was cool. I can't do that, said Emily. Well, maybe y'all can yodel, said Mrs. Lane. Mrs. Lane started yodeling. It was cool. I can't do that either, said Emily. Or maybe y'all can turn your eyelids inside out, oh, <laughs> Mrs. Lane said. And then she turned her eyelids inside out. Ew, gross! I thought I was going to throw up. I can't do that either, said Emily. I bet y'all are talented at something, Mrs. Lane told Emily. Y'all just have to find out what it is. And then there's a little footnote here. Boy, she sure says y'all a lot. With that, she picked a hula hoop up from the stage and started hula hooping while reciting the Gettysburg Address in a Donald Duck voice. Mrs. Lane is weird.